welcome Rachel Lamb from Aspiration and Discoveries, and thank you for joining us today at our CTN Virtual Information Fair. Hi, everyone. <laughs> so please describe your organization, the individuals that you support, eligibility, and the criteria catchment area within New York region. So we serve a large populations. Um, we have a lot of children, teenagers, families come from the autism spectrum, well, obviously because of the government funding. Um, we do have also a lot of various special needs children with us. Um, some of them have ADHD, um, different types of learning disability. Um, some of them have more emotional mental health issues. So we mainly serve the children and the adolescents. Um, we do offer a lot of parent support like in terms of the coaching and the training piece. So that's majority, that's um, our community. We have a center in Markham. We have a center in Newmarket. Great, thank you. Can you describe your organization's vision and how it fits with CTN's focus on the F words for childhood development? I think it's really, it's really in line of what we do. But we always like 10 years ago when we opened Aspiration, we decided that we want to take a more, how do I say? I would say we want to take a more community approach, like not just a family approach. Because we believe that if we want to help the children, we cannot just do the core of direct therapy with the children. Yes, that's majority of what we're doing. But if we don't help the families, like the caregivers, and more is the community for that awareness and that acceptance, it really doesn't matter what we do with the children together. Like by the time they go out, like from our center, things will still be the same. Like, so years ago when we opened, that's why in our therapy program, we include like all the parent coaching, like we have like um, big like free workshops like for our parents and also community like at the same time. Um, obviously everything is Zoom right now, unfortunately. Um, we also do a lot of seasonal events, like uh, again before COVID. <laughs> Uh, we host like we, um, we're lucky we have we're lucky that we have a 16,000 square feet center with our own building in Markham and then we have another 6,000 square feet in Newmarket so we're able to host a lot of community-wide Halloween party we hold like end of year performance that like we, we invite the community we invite politicians to come learn and see our kid talent um, we do a lot of fundraising like throughout the years um, right now, at this moment, we are doing fundraising for Autism Dog Service. So we create like different activity boxes like to give out to the community, like a raffle, and then everybody is welcome to chip in with their donations and 100% will be donated because all costs will be covered by us. So we do a lot of um, like the kids oriented, like family oriented, but also the community. But, and it's not just the therapy that we do. We believe the therapy is useful, but if there is no recreation and there's no fun event, like our kids cannot generalize it. Our kids have nowhere to use it. But so we do like Halloween party, we do like Christmas party, like we do parties all the time. Our team love like fun Fridays now. So every fun Friday, like we will decorate the center to be like Olympic day. We'll decorate the center to be airports because nobody can travel and everybody miss traveling right now. <laughs> so, like, so we create like fake passport for the kids. Like, so we do a lot of little things like to have fun so they can still be a kid. Right. That's great. And, and definitely, it sounds like, it, you know, the efforts involves family, friends, fun, you have functions. So that's wonderful. Um, are you able to briefly explain what your services are and supports you're able to offer families right now, considering the current COVID restrictions? We um, we are open in person. Uh, we are very fortunate that like we reopened since last May, I believe, like we open as an emergency service for more crisis family first, like because some of our families and children they really cannot do anything like remote because of the 
level of severity they are. Right? So we reopen in person, and then since then we keep opening. Uh, we are very fortunate that's like knock on wood, like no outbreak, like nothing so far to keep us going. Um, we do both like remote and tele like therapy, and we do in person because we do believe some particular families and children they really cannot do anything online but some they can like it is safer for them to do that and so we keep having both at the same time every thursday we have a remote social group happening like for um, different age group of children like so they can get together to have a little bit of a social as well um, we do one-to-one -one remote therapy too um, again that has to be based on the child and family availability obviously they do need to have certain amount of technology skills or like equipment at home for us to support that like, so we do some one-to-one -one. um whenever the child is ready like for the past year even if they're doing one-to-one -one remote therapy we usually try to give them an opportunity also in our remote social group like because by nature when they're doing remote therapy they are at home they're not able to see anybody they don't have much friends like before but so we still want to give them the formats that once a week like may not be super like therapeutical but at least on the screen like we can play games we can talk about stuff like we can like chit chat like so that's kind of the mixture of um remote service that we do like, we do run a lot of psychological assessment like in our centers as well because we do have a psychologist on board like the only thing that we do not have an online service right now like is the diagnose assessment and the psycho ed assessment because it's kind of difficult to do it online right now so um we do offer a mixture of parent training and parent coaching and we move most of our parent coaching to online then what we do is if the child is already in therapy we'll try to tape the therapy like in segments right? so that particular skills that the parents are having trouble with at home then we'll tape how the therapists work and then go through it like with the parents like with an actual video that is their child and how we work on it so it's more real and it's easier to understand for caregivers in terms of the parent training, we do offer um, two mixture of different services. One is a lot of workshops and it's always free of charge or is a fundraising event that we, our team usually vote and pick a charity like to support. And then we just roll out like a bunch of different workshops, could be transitioning to teenagers, like time, could be anything, could be communication, could be behavior, could be sleeping, eating, feeding, like could be some um, mental health issues about emotional regulations and so, so all of our psych assessment and psycho ed is still in person that's wonderful it's so glad to, to hear that you're you're able to service that population even in these times of covid so thank you thank you again for sharing your information with our ctn families and for joining us today we're going to share all the uh website information after our video uh, so that families can contact you as well. So thanks again, Rachel. Absolutely. No problem.